Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, your weekly recap of the precious metals markets and the news closely adjacent to the metals markets. Tori's starting to wear me down with the competing <laughs> intros we've been doing for five, six years now. The news is all that matters, Miles, not the I know. chart. Charts are irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the seasonals. The seasonals. <laughs> Trends are a lie. It's all fake news. Uh, speaking of fake news, Tori has some for us. <laughs> so, actually, no, this is going to be kind of a fun show, hot off the heels of both the BRICS and the ever fascinating Jackson Hole meeting last week, which Kevin and David actually went into pretty well this week. So if you're catching our show here on Thursday, you did not catch Wednesday's edition of the McIlvaney Weekly Commentary. Highly recommend you catch that. It should be the show posted right before this one on our YouTube page. No, I'm really glad you started with the mention of bricks. And Rob, you speak to Jackson Hole here a little bit. But the update for the week, I guess you'd say, from the summit last week, again, that was the 15th annual summit. They've already started talking about planning next year's summit. Russia's going to host, and it won't be in Russia. But they've already said that they've got another year to develop this currency. So this is a long, drawn-out, as it should be, like the post Bretton Woods era when the United States was developing its status as world reserve currency with the U.S. dollar, it was through the 40s and the 50s, right? So yeah. it's not like this overnight deal. So everybody needs to just be understanding of the fact that's going to take time. But they did formally invite in six new countries. They had 63, 65 in attendance that were invited to the summit. But in terms of joining, five of those six have said yes. The one holdout is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia can't play for both teams <laughs> you know, they've got sure they can uh they probably can they'll yeah. figure it out yeah. yeah yeah and what we had said earlier too was that if the saudis were to join then it would represent over 30 percent of the world's oil production well that's actually not true it's actually 42 percent and 29 percent of global gdp so now you have a real prevalent alliance there that is a true doesn't mean that it's a, an enemy of the united states but certainly a counterparty for other countries to look to in, on the world trade scene, and especially if they develop a currency. So we'll see the other countries, Argentina, Egypt, Ethiopia, United Arab Emirates, Iran, they're a lock, and that's a lot of oil that's represented there, which gets them up to that point. So as of January of 2024, they will officially, it sounds like, join BRICS. Meanwhile, our NATO expansion is flirting with adding tensions geopolitically and everything else. But I don't know that that's what BRICS is trying to do. Uh, it's not the military might, it's the economic might. Right. But what about Jackson Hole? I mean, was there anything that came out of that for you guys that is game changer or trajectory changing? I didn't see a thing that struck me. Miles, what about you? No, I appreciated David and Kevin went through the discussion of what the Federal Reserve Bank needs to see interest rates at to be keeping our economy kind of at par. You know, no growth, no decline. What does that number look like? And they're finding out that number is a lot higher than they thought it was going to be. And then the second thing was the comparison between the gold holdings at the U.S. Treasury compared to the balance sheet of the Federal Reserve, which has been a key topic in this show for the last couple months. Right. But that wasn't discussed at Jackson Hole. That's something that's coming out because of right. all the people questioning us. Hey, why should I be buying gold at around $2,000 an Fair. ounce? It's at an all-time high. And when we compare the Fed's balance sheet to the holdings of gold by the Treasury, what do we see, Tori? Well, that's something that was once unfathomable. I mean, the, the Federal Reserve balance sheet alone at $9 trillion plus, whoever would have thought? that $9 trillion was something that wasn't indicative of a complete economic collapse. Right. So the Fed balance sheet, they've printed and are holding $9 trillion more dollars than they should be. And yet the U.S. Treasury valuation of all of its gold is around $1 trillion. So we follow ratios here a lot, gold to silver, platinum and palladium, the Dow to gold, which we can talk about. But this Fed balance sheet to U.S. Treasury gold value ratio is brand new. This is really actually pretty fascinating because that gives you obviously a nine to one ratio. Well, that's the highest ever, which actually means it's the most undervalued that gold has ever been. Versus the Fed's balance sheet versus yeah. the dollar. So the relative value of gold compared to the Fed balance sheet is an all-time record. Now we've had two other 
previous times where we well, that saw are, this, that are noteworthy that are noteworthy but didn't match this right. right so you had a seven to one and a six to one well in the other extreme we've also had over the course of a hundred years two other significant overvaluations down as low as 1.5 where the fed balance sheet was only one and a half times the u.s treasury gold holdings so here we sit at nine and that just screams that gold hasn't gone anywhere yet doesn't it well, what years was it at seven to one and six to one? 1969 and 1999. So what happened to gold from 1969 from that point? Where did we go? Great point. So in a short period of time, we tripled. Really in 1969, you could argue that gold was at $35 an ounce. Right. And by 73, it was at 100. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. So there's your first triple. Yep. So a 300% increase in the gold price from, you could even say 1971 to 73 was a triple. Exactly. Well, we saw that again, yep. 1976 to 1979, when it goes from 100 to 300. Right. Right. So you think, okay, well, that's not from the original, because we know that where we sit now versus where we started, we're up over 4,200%. You mean from our company standpoint? Yeah, from when, when we, we started. started in 72 at $50 an ounce, we're now, we can just call it 2,000. Right, Yeah. right, so 4,000% there, yeah. okay? Well, there's all these 300% spikes built in over that period of time. In fact, there's five of them. So we've gone to 300 now, we go from just under 300 to 1980 when you cross over the 800 barrier. All right, there's another one. Then again in 2000, so we had a quiet couple decades, right? Right. And from 1980 to 2000, there wasn't a whole lot of activity. Decent volatility, but not significant gains. Yeah, it was pretty flatlined. Okay, yeah. and you were working through that whole time. Yeah, I was right? here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so you can speak to that and how important it was to still be acquiring ounces back then. Well, from 2000 to 2007, we tripled again. We'd come back down to the mid 200s, went back up to 800 by 2007. So from a performance standpoint, if we just chart gold versus the Dow since 2000 to now, gold has done extremely well versus the Dow. You talked about that two weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, it's outperformed the S&P 500 even, which is a common buy and hold strategy. Gold has over those 50 years by a couple thousand percent. Like it's not even close. But here we are now, okay? We're at the high. Let's call it 2000. It's just around 1930, 1950, somewhere around there. Where do we go from here? What would cause you to believe that gold is undervalued? So we look at the Fed balance sheet versus the treasury holdings. We're at nine to one. So that is definitely showing the all-time weakest price of gold versus the dollar in terms of the ratio, which is important. Ratios matter. What do you see coming for gold versus the Dow, say, over the next five to 10 years? Well, conservatively, I think in the shorter term, it's 3,000 plus. And people think, oh, come on, $3,000 gold. Well, again, from 2007 to 2011, we had another 300% increase right. from $600 an ounce to over 1900 Well, Miles, you've argued over and over again that the start of this bull market was in the end of 2015. At 1,050. From 1, the long term, yeah, yeah right. at 1,050. So if 1,050 times three, there's your 3,150. Right. And we're only halfway, we're up 100% is all from there. And yes, we're getting some traction. We're getting some underlying fundamentals. Could it happen very quickly? Yes. You oftentimes see these parabolic moves, but are you buying at the top of the market right now? That's what I keep hearing. People are asking, why would I buy at the top of the market? Well, not only do I think we're not buying at the top of the market, I think that 3,000 is too low a number. I think that gold's going to easily break 10,000 compared to the amount of currency that's in circulation. Well, that's a scary thought on the other side of that equation, too. Because we talk about the real reason you want to own gold. Again, speaking of ratio, here's another one. How about gold to uh, loaves of bread? Yeah. Because yeah. that one doesn't change much throughout no. history. Right. And $10,000 gold is $10 loaves of bread. Well, great point. Same with gold to a house. Yeah. You know, how many gold ounces of gold did it take? Oh, that's right. How many yeah. ounces of gold does it take to buy a house? 
Gas Go back and do your own legwork and Google that year by year. You'll be shocked. Yeah. It's actually a good value. Yeah, gas is actually cheaper today than it was 50 years ago in terms of ounces of gold. There you go. Gas prices have actually technically gone down, which well, they should. That's right. And from an immediate metric, all you have to do is look at real rate of return, too. So if you can go out there in a climbing interest rate environment and get a good rate of return on your cash in a CD or a money market or T yeah, bills or whatever. Yeah, it competes with people holding gold. Why am I holding gold if I can get 11 or 12% on my CD? You know, it competes. And we're seeing that to a degree now you can get 5% money out there. It's available. But it hasn't really impacted gold. Well, and that's what's crushing the banks. Yeah. Is why would you sit in a bank CD or a bank savings account when you can just move the money over to a T-bill money market? Right. Yeah. And the banks are getting crushed on liquidity this year. Hence all the downgrades, right? But right. you've got this going on right now, Rob. The reason being that gold is hanging in there is because the real rate of return. If you use the inflationary metric that the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury would have us believe... What do they say now? 4.3% inflation? Come on. It's well over 11%. We were over 16%. Has it come down? Yes. But that means that if you're out there getting 5% return in short-term treasuries and the real inflation rate is 11%, you're still minus six. Yeah. And if we get to even or a positive real rate of return, that's when you can say that I'm not buying gold. You know, I'm tempted to stop talking about inflation because they have muddied the waters so much as to the definition of it. So you guys can hold me to this going forward. I think I might start just actually calling it what it is, cost of living. Because yeah. the cost of living expenses due to government and Fed money printing and borrowing is what we're really, that's the brass tacks of what we're getting to. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. And all that to be said, look, gold's not overvalued. Not even close. In all of these metrics, it's undervalued. Not even close. We've got a lot further to go. And when we get to 3,000, I'm not going to recommend my people sell unless we're at $3,000 gold and say, what would be 20 to 1 silver? $600 silver? I mean, that's not even a good number. Even $100 silver? Well, yeah. Well, but I guess that'd keep the ratio about, what's the average ratio gold to silver over the last 40 years? Let's, I think 50, let's call it, 55. Let's call, it, let's call it 60, which gives you $50 silver, sure. 3,000, right? That's a 100% increase in the silver price from where we are right now. That's and that's just back to silver. the average. And that's, yeah, and, so you see and two previous all-time highs. That's yeah. the highest it's been twice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, still, you're right, Rob, far more undervaluation going on in the silver market. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to some ratio trading. If we can pull it off, you know, where we can get to 40 to 1 or 50 to 1 silver to gold. You know, we get the $2,000 gold. Well, we're there now, but let's say silver takes a run and retests 50. That would be amazing. Well, we're off to a good start. Like, yeah, why we don't are. we jump into the silver chart? Let's, yeah, let's mix speaking, it up and go back. Speaking here. of off to a good start, the show's <laughs> almost over. We haven't even looked at charts yet. Here are charts I for this you, week. Everything bounced. Are all that matters. Uh, so. It's just about the news. <laughs> it's just about the news. So, yeah, we can start with silver. That's fine. Silver bounced just like gold did, just like platinum did, and actually just like the Dow did. So we will check all of them out. We had our rising trend line kind of channel in silver. We did bounce the bottom of it turned out perfect. We're back about halfway up to the top. So if we meander our way back up to the top, we're probably looking like $28 silver before this is all said and done in the next couple weeks. As Rob joked at the beginning of the show, now the seasonals kick in and now it's yeah. October, November when that's starting to happen. And $28 silver turns into 35 pretty quickly when we get into the end of the year or even beginning of next year. Where do you see us hitting our head? at least temporarily resistance wise 2550 2750 we got to be close one. rsi is getting close to the top yeah rsi is definitely getting close to the overbought side that wouldn't signal an immediate reversal on the first touch up on rsi but what you could end up seeing is what i talk about a lot divergence where you have rsi start bouncing kind of down and i can draw this on the chart here as we're looking at it while price is still climbing and that's showing kind of 
continual exhaustion Mm -hmm. taking place, uh, do you usually correct that back out? So let's say we get up to a rising trend line. You know, where's the top, you ask me? It kind of depends on how quickly we get there. Because when you have a rising channel, the longer the time goes by, the The higher higher it's going to end up getting. So I'm going to say maybe 28, I think, would be a pretty reasonable ceiling here, depending on how quickly we get it. Uh, Then probably a step back down to around where we're at now. You know, the highs from back in July, early August, around 25. So if we stair step from 28 to 25 and then up to 35, that would be a very clean looking market move on the charts for the next couple months. But I'll tell you what muddies the water is the dollar chart. Yes. Go to the dollar chart. Look at that because, you know, we can talk about RSI and rising trend lines for gold and silver and overvaluations, but look at the dollar. Well, and Miles just used that term divergence. I like the image of gold versus the dollar. And you see this, for lack of a better term, divergence, yeah. right? So this yeah. is a great image, yeah. almost a mirror it's, image it's of each other. It's an inverse relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. most of sure. the time. So has been definitely for the last couple of years an inverse relationship between gold and the dollar. And then you just look at the dollar index and we kind of continue in this declining slide that it's been in despite raising interest rates. The recent raise in the interest rate is just every time you put more nitrous in the gas tank, it just doesn't do as much as it did last time. It's addiction is a dangerous thing. <laughs> and, well, and I and do we're think, addicted. I do think this is where the BRICS is affecting the dollar. I think that's, I do believe that that is having an effect, even though they have another year to come up with their currency. Well, at the same time that they will be weakening the dollar, they will continue to put a floor in the gold price. Yeah. Right? They have. They have. For the last decade, they've been the buyer of last resort. Every time it dips, they look at it as a bargain. They buy substantial amounts, whether it's Russia or China or Turkey, and they put the floor in the price. So that, I think, is a trend that will actually pick up. And next week, Tori, I want you to talk about the foreign nations and their commitment to buying treasuries and see... Are they net buyers or are they net sellers or are they at par? I'm curious about that. You got it. And closing out the dollar, I think it's also worth pointing out that the dollar's turned back down in the last day or two, mm-hmm. and it did fail to put in a higher high. Mm-hmm. You know, I did have this declining channel. Yeah, yeah, you talked about that last week. I had this declining channel, which it did push above, but it didn't get above the May high. So if we continue to turn down here in the dollar, it's like we're having the same conversation from a few years ago, but different topic. A few years ago, it was, hey, 60 billion inflation a month ain't doing it, and we got to do 80. 80 ain't doing it, we got to do 100. Well, now we're seeing the same thing with the interest rates on the complete opposite side. 2% didn't do it. Maybe it needs to be 4. 4 didn't do it. Let's get them up to 8. Well, when does 8 become 16? When is it 1985 again? Mm -hmm. Well, just a couple months ago, Everybody was saying that September may see a rate cut, you know, that with the way the numbers were going now, it's like a 40% chance that we have a rate hike, not just a pause, but an actual hike in September. So you're right. They're losing the battle. Well, they're behind. They're the behind. Yes. They caused it. They got behind it. They can't catch up. It's like a runaway horse. Yeah. And finally, in metals, uh, best for last, gold. Gold had a nice little bounce here. I think we got down to around 1895, 92-ish. Yeah. But we're back up before we came in to record 1945. So a nice little couple-day bounce in gold. I'm still arguing the potential range in gold is still pretty significant. Yeah. I mean, you're still talking, and we've mentioned this the last few weeks, 1980, anything under 1980 is noise. Anything above 1860 1860- yeah. yeah, is noise. Yeah. So you've got a big trading range here in gold where anywhere it is in this range is irrelevant till it sets a new precedent. And uh, I'll tell you what, the clientele have awakened. We had a couple of weeks where, you know, it was nice and quiet. Mm-hmm. We were able to get caught up on things that needed to get done. But now we're back against the wall again. People well, and it was are, nice seeing gold come down towards that 1900 again because it yeah. gave people a chance to prepare. You know, yeah. people who listen to the show or... Our clients we get to talk to that might have had money waiting in the wings after they saw 1980 and it wasn't going to get above it. Well, they had a couple weeks to get ready and sub-1900 get to jump in. Yeah. So that was Dollar a really nice average. opportunity that yeah. we saw. Yeah, so I agree. 
Finally, the Dow, switching away from the metals. Rob, I know you've been waiting for this one. You brought something up the other week when we were talking, and that's it looked like the Dow might have breached that lower rising channel. It didn't, because I did draw that out. It did touch it, and we've had a very, very minimal bounce off of it. I don't see it holding necessarily. I mean, I know I've been arguing for a month or so. I'd really like to see the Dow take a double top here. I'd Mm -hmm. like to see it get back up to that 36,000 mark back where the old highs were and then just trip. Mm -hmm. But it might have already tripped. So we'll see how the fall goes if it continues back down. So if we do continue down, it's probably just moving back below and actually finally breaching that rising floor uh, Mm -hmm. that we talked about. Okay. Well, when we got down to the 1900 on the show, we talked about this is when you buy your hedge. Right. So gold is a hedge on some key other markets, right? The U.S. dollar, I think we've made that point here today, and it closing close to 104, we saw the equities markets almost setting new highs. You see real estate still up there, overvalued in our opinion, even though commercial real estate is showing signs of weakness. So gold is a hedge on all of those like it most of the time will counter all three of those markets so when you have those three markets still overvalued and you see gold become temporarily undervalued that's when you position in your hedge right so if we see it again just because we've double bottomed here at just under 1900 doesn't mean we won't triple bottom so if it happens again and all those fundamentals are still intact those are just excellent entry points save yourself a couple percent that's fine but don't get frozen on the sidelines And a lot of people were looking, and I thought this would probably be the case as well, that BRICS and the CBDC and Jackson Hole would provide some momentum for gold. But as far as gold's concerned, those events that people have been talking about for months now really have had very little impact on gold. So we'll see. We'll see what the next few weeks bring. So that's going to do it this week for Golden Rule Radio. As always, we appreciate you stopping by. If you liked what you heard, swing on over to our website. We can be found at McElvaney.com. You're also welcome to give Tori, Rob, myself, or anyone else here at McElvaney Precious Metals a call to discuss your personal portfolio. We can be reached at 800-525-9556. We're on Twitter at ICA Gold or on Facebook at McElvaney Financial. Thanks for listening and have a good week. And most importantly, if you'd like a picture of Rob wearing his cop sunglasses, (laughs) we can provide that as well.